morning. What a blessed day to be here, even with things going on in life. Um, a few announcements this morning. <clears throat> Those of you who remember Lee Hurt, he is in hospice at this time. Nick Hoadley. <clears throat> Nick Holdley and Marlis will be having surgery on the 11th, and Craig is still, Milligan is still in the hospital with COVID, so we ask that you lift them up in prayer this week. Um, any other announcements this morning? Can you all hear me out there okay? Is that better? Okay, we'll do that. We'll just move the mic a little bit this morning. Well, <clears throat> as Mark always says, God loves you and I love you. So let us start this morning with you. Please join me. Rise if you're able in, in the call to worship that we'll call. Let us believe. Let her do it then. Okay. Our call to worship this morning is in the form of a prayer. Dear God, in this moment, help us to let go of all thoughts and concerns. When we let go, we are able to receive. Hands form into tight fists, our hands not open to receive anything. When we close off our hearts and our spirit, we cannot receive your blessing. Help us to let go to receive your blessings. Letting go in this moment, we receive your loving presence around and within us. We gladly receive this gift of letting go and letting you lead and guide us. Amen. Our opening hymn is We Three Kings it's on page 254. It will be up on the screen.
Our psalm reading this morning selected verses from Psalm number 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. This time, will you join me in a moment of silence and in prayer?
Dear Lord, we want to start by giving you thanks today that we can be in the house of the Lord and give thanks to you who is seated on a higher throne. We give you thanks for a little bit of sunshine and a little bit of reprieve from the bitter cold. We give you thanks for your comfort that we have so needed this last year for loss of loved ones and friends. We give you thanks for healing that has happened in the lives of people where your miracles have happened. We thank you that through all of this in the storm, you have been beside us even when we have held on to things that hold us back from knowing your love, you are there. And today we just ask that you will continue to be with us in spirit and in love, to open our hearts and engage us in your wisdom so that we may use your love to serve you and be guided in by you on our journey in this life. Lord, and we are grateful for the words of fellowship, for the words of encouragement, the words lifted up in music and song. We give you thanks for all these things. And Lord, we remember this morning the words that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 2, and this should be 1 through 12. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Easter lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose and we have come to worship him. Herod was very deeply disturbed by the, their questions as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where do the prophets say the Messiah would be born? He asked them. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah, for you are a ruler who will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time they first saw the star. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
But when it was time to leave, they went home another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I entitled the sermon, Let Go and Let God. Before I get started this morning, I would like to, I've, how many of you received a rock this morning? Oh, everybody has a rock. Okay, good, good. I've already been to Patterson, and I think there's about as many rocks in here as there are in the congregation this morning, which is amazing. Patterson really came out in force this morning, <laughs> you know, even in this cold weather. So praise the Lord, you know, we have a good congregation. This is my prayer box. This was made by my uncle I lost a few weeks ago when I was a young girl. It has a special wood on the front. It's purple heart wood because of its color. It's called purple heart. And he made it with a cross and praying hands on it. So I have treasure. This is like one of those treasures the wise men gave to Jesus. To me, it's a treasure I've been given. And inside, I've already collected rocks from Patterson. The rock you have in hand is going to be about today's scripture. I would like you to think of something you're holding on to that you really want to let go of. And I want you to hold on. I want it in your fist. I want you to hold on to it during the whole church service. Now, I did have one guy at Patterson that did put it in his pocket to hold on to it. Yeah, I think he was going to leave it for his wife to find when she emptied the pockets before doing the laundry. But I do, I want you to hold on to that because there's a message in this from the wise men today about holding on to things. And it's a different look at it for me. I really looked at this scripture differently. It's not just about following the star and giving our gifts. There was a lot of letting go and letting God take them on that journey. Just the same as we are on a journey today. And a lot of times we are holding on to things that really keep us from seeking God and letting him help us and putting our trust in him. How many of you have your rock in your hand? How many of you have an idea of what you want to let go of? Okay, let's move on then. This cliche is not really biblically scriptural. It's more of a worldly cliche saying, quote, when we have a lot of feel-good quotes that we hear every day, I see on Facebook every day, um, or somebody will just say to me. But I want to look at it in a different aspect. I want to see what it says about our Christian God. Because a lot of times we do, we feel overwhelmed, we're anxious, we're angry, we're sick, we feel lost, we need to overcome addictions, we need to overcome financial struggles, we feel anxious. And that cliche of just letting go and letting God, there is more to it than just that. Because if you're like me, we need rescued. I need someone to rescue me from my sin. I need to rescue from my fears, my anxieties, and my sense of loss. I've had a lot of loss lately. I'm not going to come up here and say I haven't. I cried a lot this week over the loss of a friend, my uncle a few weeks ago, another church member. 
had to let go of not seeing them here today or tomorrow. But then I have to remember what God says. I give you a promise of everlasting life with the saints in heaven. Let God. So with that being said, I also have to remember that I'm not in control. You know, when I'm driving down the road, I have the steering wheel. Jack may tell me which way to go, but I'm going to tell him I'm driving. And I have to remember that when I'm walking through these storms and I'm driving through these storms, that I have another person in the back seat, and sometimes he's in the front seat. I can't see him, but he's there. Just like he was in the boat with the disciples when the storm came upon them, and they, he was sleeping. And they asked him to calm. They woke him up, <laughs> but he was there. All that time he was there. I don't know if he was really sleeping as much as he was waiting for us to wake up to see him in the boat with us, to walk with us through the storm. So knowing that this cliche, this quote, is not based on scripture, we really do need to take a close look of what it means as a Christian to let go and let God. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. You know, the wise men, They've been studying for years. They have wisdom of the knowledge of the stars, the universe. They have knowledge of prophecy. They've been studying. In a land to the east, they may not know all the Jewish laws, but there's some kind of sign that they, they want to follow. They, wanna, they know there's a king that's going to be born. So, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Well, they're going to get up. They're going to discuss this journey together. And it's a good example for us. We are on a journey together. They had to be in fellowship to discuss their plans. They had, we need to be in prayer to discuss our plans for the church. It's changed. Our lives have changed. We need fellowship. They needed to plan their trip, what they're going to take with them. What are we going to take with us? On our journey, we have to plan. Now, I know that sometimes we plan and God laughs, you know, because things don't happen the way we plan. But we still need a plan. And we have to seek God in that plan. That is the part of letting go and letting God. Let God show us the plan. That was the first example I found as I was reading them. And he also, it probably had some burdens along the way. You know, they had, like I said, the storm that they had to follow. I don't know if that star was also during the day or if it was just at night. But I can imagine if they were following that star at night, it gets pretty dark at night. And we don't know where to put our next footstep because it's hard to see in front of us. And right now, I feel like it is hard to see in front of us in what direction I need to go, where we need to go as a church. 
where we need to help our children go in their growth, in their journey to know Jesus. To find that forgiveness, to find that life everlasting. And I had a few, some other examples that I would like to share that I found while reading the scriptures. One is to nurture that fellowship. But just as the wise men did, we need to nurture, encourage, help, serve, sometimes just be there and listen. We need to be devoted to one another. Whether we come here in fellowship, whether we fellowship on Zoom, we need to find encouragement through scripture and through others. And another way I found of letting go and letting God as a way, as a means to do this is to discover God's promises. And in order to do that, I really got to ask questions. When the wise men got to Jerusalem, they go, where's the newborn king of Jews? Where's the newborn king of the Jews? Where's our king today? I have to seek and I have to discover his promises. You know, they did follow that star. And that star is part of God's creation. God created that star so that they could follow. You know, we do have this beautiful world we live in that we're supposed to be taking care of and to cherish and enjoy and have fun, and to provide in. Discover God's love through creation. He can help you follow. I'm a walker. I always find peace and serenity on my walks in creation. You can find God there. You know, I don't know. I don't follow the stars. I don't read the stars and the signs for the future, and I don't know what it holds. But we can, through seeking God's word, and through creation, discover more and more each day of how much he loves us and wants us to be at home with him. The next thing I found that the wise men were doing is they were letting God become the focus of their life. The wise men had to focus on finding Jesus. If they were going to see Jesus, they really had to focus on getting there. And they had a little bump in the road. Herod has called them, when they reached Jerusalem, Herod called them away to meet with him after Herod had already spoken to the priests and the teachers of the law to find out where, when the star had started. I'm going to tell you, I'm, the reason I'm having a little trouble reading is I had a bump in the road this morning. My printer didn't work. I had to do a lot of handwriting <laughs> to fill in the blanks here. I had to really focus on what the computer was saying, get in and onto paper. I had to focus. <laughs> I, I had to look straight ahead that I need to be in Patterson by 9 o'clock. I made it five minutes still because I had became anxious. 
I had to refocus on what God was wanting me to do today. They had been taken away from their journey. King Herod, Herod with his charismatic talk to them, that's what you want to call it. Oh, I want to see Jesus too. Tell me where he is when you find him. Come back. We have worldly talk like that to us. People telling us how to follow Christ. Sometimes it's not scripturally sound, and sometimes it's not the way we should be going. But what happens after they leave, leave that meeting? They see the star again. They are able to focus on that star that will take them to Bethlehem. So focus on your scripture. Focus on your fellowshipping. Focus on your time together. Focus on serving, because a lot of times when you're serving, you're not thinking about all those other things that are hardships that you're holding on to in the palm of your hand. Because it's okay to pause. It's okay to refocus. It's okay to proceed again. Another one is trusting God when you hit a bump in the road. And we can just say that the wise men did that, that having to go see King Herod was a bump in the road. They had to go a different direction. This summer I had, was on a, I wanted to go to a cell out in the country, this barn cell. I had my GPS on and Sometimes when I'm not using my smarts up here to go down a certain road, and I let my GPS take me down a low-maintenance road, I get stuck. I did. I got stuck. I hit a bump in the road. I didn't get to my destination that day. And I was anxious getting out. But I called for help, and it came. That's what we do when we hit a bump in the road. Seek that star. And then we need to discern what God is telling us. The wise men, they had to discern what Herod was telling them. And then after they found Jesus, what God told them in a dream. They had to discern which way to go. Are we going to follow? And a lot of that, when we're letting go and letting God, there is a lot of discernment in that. Because you can't do it without prayer. You can't do it without reading scripture. You can't do it without fellowship. We need all of this. And most of all, we need Jesus. Seeking discernment in the right direction to follow on our journey is spiritual work of knowing the difference and the wisdom to carry it out. Don't follow the GPS. And they did just that. They didn't follow Herod. They went home. They went home. Another way. And that's what we can do. We can discern the right path to take that leads us to our heavenly home. And the last one I would like to share with you this morning is to let go of entitlement. 
I want you to look at who the three wise, we say there were three wise men, but that's, we don't know for sure. The wise men, with all their knowledge, with all the frankincense, gold and myrrh in their treasure chests, probably men well thought of in their community, entitled to many things because of who they were. They had status. They were important. But yet they left their homes, their country, to seek Jesus. And when they bowed down, when they found Jesus, they bowed down to him. They bowed down to him. Being up here this morning for me is not an entitlement. Being better than you is not an entitlement. That hymn we sang this morning, who sits at the higher throne? We should all be bowing down. No one is entitled to grace and mercy through good works, through service, We, when we bow down to Jesus, it is a gift of grace. It is a gift of mercy. It is a grace of forgiveness. It is salvation. It is a new way of letting go. And letting God. How many of you still have that rock in your hand? Do you all have something you would like to let go of today? Oh, you mean, do you all, yeah, do, come on. How many have something they want to let go of today? <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> this is interactive this morning, okay? <laughs> okay, Bob, what did you say back there to Phyllis? <laughs> Like, oh, that rock. <laughs> That's good. But before we let go of that rock, and that's what my prayer box is here for today. I, when you leave today, put your rock in my prayer box. And the rest of this month, I'm going to pray over what you want to leave to let go of. And I am going to pray for all of you how God wants to show you to proceed on your journey, to know him, to receive his glory. See, God is not just a king. He is our Emmanuel, God with us. He is more. And the wise men recognize this. I don't know what happened when they left. I don't know if they went back to their country and they told everyone. I don't know how they followed Jesus after they left, but they did kneel that day before him in honor of him. And they recognized him by the gifts they actually gave, the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh, which were very symbolic of the life and the death and the resurrection that Jesus would have for us today. I have a little disclaimer here this morning about this cliche. We cannot leave everything to fate or chance. It is not okay to let go of our belief in Christ. 
we are not letting go of accountability when we let God. We still need to pursue God's direction so that God does not become a worldly God, powerless and distant. We do not want to forget the death and resurrection, the basis of our faith that Jesus asks us to take into the world and follow him. At this time, we're going to pull up the serenity prayer. And you can take your rock, hold it up like this. You're going to stand. All right. I love this. <laughs> uh, go ahead and stand. And that thing in your life you want to let go of, as you're reading this prayer, remember that he has the wisdom. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Bless all of you here this morning. God does have the wisdom. He wants me to change. He wants me to change. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you.